Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at tidal power. So let's dive right into it. So it's a source of renewable energy, same as hydropower, same as geothermal. Now, it's basically a lower version of hydro dam simply because it's not continuous as a hydro dam is. And it's a very ancient technology. It's uh, almost like windmills. We knew how to build them long, long, long ago. And if you want to understand where the source of that energy is coming from, source is coming from the moon. It's not like uh, radiation and uh, creation energy that is uh, locked inside the earth for geothermal or it's a uh, sun-based. It's basically moon's gravitational energy that we are leeching off every time you are taking, uh, basically turning a turbine and doing anything like that. So that's the energy source. It's moon powered basically. So why do we have so much interest in this technology? One very simple, tides are predictable. This is very crucial for almost any source of power is that uh, you should able to know when it's gonna give you power and this completes every aspect of it as in like solar is not predictable as in wind is not predictable as in simply even if you have a hydro dam uh, rain affects it this is on the sea so basically there is no up and down you know when it's gonna work you know how much is gonna provide this is very crucial and it has almost no to uh, no land uses simply Think of it this way, even if you create a basically dam based hydropower, what you do is create a small land area where water spills inside during high tide and then goes uh, back into the sea during the low tide. So you don't take away too much land and especially if you are using turbine designs which are like laid in open seas, you are not using any land. So this is very crucial, like solar power uh, takes up a lot of land and I mean hectares and hectares of land. So for that reason, this is very attractive to us. And it's old and tested like we know how this works we we know how tides come in we know when tide comes in and uh, we've been running this sort of small scale hydropower for very very long time so we know what we are doing how does it work well there are many 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 structures but these are the two primary one either you build something like this dam basically where you create a dam and then you let water come in into one basin recharge basin it's, it's uh, recharging that basin during high tide and then during low tide it's uh, draining off this power plant structure can go upwards of 300 megawatts right now we have 200 to 250 megawatt plant but like you can scale it up to 300 megawatts of power and then you have a second structure which is like turbine like this this has almost no to uh, zero land users simply because it's fully in water and that turbine that i'm showing you that's uh, rated for 35 kilowatt of continuous power so these are the two main structures. There are many other structures that we are working on uh, improving, designing, but as of now, these two are the most tested. This one has been going on for roughly 40 to 50 years. This is just kind of new because this is engineering wise very complex. This is not an easy thing to engineer. So what are the cons of it? First con, it's very destructive to the ecosystem. Not only, especially that turbine design, it destroys marine life. If the, uh, if the turbine is placed in a position where it's uh, uh, coming into marine uh, immigration pattern, basically marine life immigrating to one point to another because of season changes, it's gonna destroy them. It's like gonna decimate them. And not to mention small, uh, small aquatic creatures cannot uh, you know, swim away because the turbine is creating a sort of vortex. It's gonna suck it in. Like big animals can, uh, you know, swim away, but small ones are getting destroyed. And not to mention like seaweeds and all that can exist in a place where they should not be and not only cause damage to the equipment, but also to the ecosystem basis. Because this is not supposed to be, you know, uh, basically if you move a plant from uh, one place to another, it could destroy the local ecosystem where you have planted. This sort of e effects happen. Like we are doing serious amount of research and development to make sure there is almost no this sort of catastrophe and it is very very capital intensive as in like solar i already mentioned in my solar video that we are reaching a point where it is reaching price parity this is no way near like the power produced from these things are no way near the cost parity that we need for uh, cheap like basically to compete with coal or to even compete with solar they, they are no way near as cheap as it has to be and inherent capital investment is so damn high that even if it works for 10 20 years it's not gonna like you know pay us back so this is very crucial that's why most of the geothermal plants are operated by government or government plus private venture like this is not something that any small individual can just you know create a solar farm and sell the electricity 
and it does not provide continuous power like of course you can have a scenario where you build a turbine system which is providing power but it will go to zero during some times specifically while the tides are changing so while tide is changing awesome 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 but it will reach a point where it reaches equilibrium for those hours you will get no power like you may get a uh, turbine still might keep rotating because water motion is there inertia is there but it will not give you enough energy for that reason this does cut out like it does inherently cut out and dam structures they flat out cut out or they sometimes have a design that is so simple it only uh, extracts energy from high tide or from low tide so it won't work both ways so what can we expect in the future first it needs a lot of r d like solar has reached a point where it's a uh, very cost competitive almost now and uh, wind energy i already made a video about that it's uh, reaching there but this is way off like this is way way off a lot of r d needs to be done to design the turbines design the system because as you can see things that have moving parts don't last very long and if and not to mention if you want to put them in sea you also have to figure out how you're going to do the maintenance and not to mention sea water is very corrosive even to copper even to stainless steel like over time it corrodes almost everything and sometimes it's just going to do raw cor uh, corrosion as in not um, it's not going to corrode you like creating oxides it will simply erode you away for that reason these structures are uh, very very uh, strong they have to be very strong consequence of that it has to also becomes idiotically expensive and as you can see we are figuring out some designs that will have minimal to no impact on marine life and even if you don't care about marine life you have to make sure the seaweeds don't end up jamming these sort of thing so we really need to polish the design and capital investment is the biggest hurdle as i talk to you so first and foremost we have to make the capital investment go down nobody's gonna care about it like if you come to someone is like yeah 500 million dollars is the starting price people are like no thank you solar can start as little as 10 to 20 million dollars for that reason capital investment has to go down so this was my presentation on tidal energy i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't dislike it uh, i would suggest you comment what you want to see in the next episode of science thursdays and please subscribe Press the bell icon if you are free and as always, thanks for watching.